everybody, welcome back to Gnome at Home. Oh, oh, we have a special guest. You may be wondering why I'm wearing this outfit and who the heck this is beside me, but today we're doing the ultimate 1990s nostalgic movie inspired recipe for one of my all time favorites, Matilda. A real what? <laughs> so I have Miss Trunchable, or my best friend Mario, but we're gonna be making a Matilda inspired double chocolate layer cake in honor of Brucey. You can do Bob it, Brucey. <laughs> you can do it, Brucey. Yeah. One of the most iconic food scenes, I think, in Hollywood, really. And even though it's kind of a disgusting scene, you yeah. know, like he's like trying to eat it. Blood, yeah. sweat, and tears. Cookie, what time? Cookie? Cookie. Cookie? Yeah. Cookie. My blood, sweat, and tears went into this cake. You know, whatever they say. Gross. Um, it's so kind of gross. Do that the whole time. But the cake does look freaking good. It looks so delicious. So I always thought about it, and so many people on TikTok and social media, since I've been doing all these movie inspired recipes, they've all requested this recipe. So we had to do it. And chocolate is my life. So it's only fitting that I do this. And like, let's just talk about this. My outfit is Matilda inspired, but also a little Miss Honey. Cause- It's Matilda grows up to be Miss Honey. Yes. So let's get started. This is a really rich chocolatey cake and one that is good for so many occasions. I'm actually making this because it's my dad, sister, and grandfather's birthdays this week. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone, but it's great for birthdays. It also can be made into cupcakes. Um, it's pretty flexible. You can also make it as a bunt cake if you want, but we're gonna let's do a layer cake. Yeah. <laughs> let's do this. So um, let's get into it. it. It's a pretty, I mean, there's, you know, some standard ingredients. Uh, but the key is to make sure you have really good quality dark cocoa powder, and that's how we're gonna get that rich chocolate flavor in the cake. And mm. as always with my baking, it needs to be super duper moist. Oh, I was gonna say fresh. Oh yeah, fresh, I'm duh, off but moisture. I don't care if you don't like the word moist. Moist. moist so let's moist. do it. He would have said goodbye. No, thank um, you. Uh, <laughs> no, you would have said to the choke. <laughs> so, um, all right. So all purpose flour. We're gonna put it in a bowl. This is two cups of all-purpose flour. May I ask a quick question? Yeah. Why, sometimes it's sifted, sometimes it's not. Sometimes people sift to make sure it's evenly distributed, and sometimes people sift just to bring a little air to it. Okay. But I don't necessarily want this cake to be airy. I want it fudgy and moist and... Dense. Not dense, <laughs> like it's gotta be like light but fudgy, Love if that. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, like me. Probably not, yeah. <laughs> so it's trunchable. We're gonna add, it's two cups flour and two cups sugar. I know it's kind of a crazy ratio, but we need sugar in here to really bring out that chocolate flavor also. Um, so let's just whisk this together. And we're going to add our cocoa powder. Much wanna, too good for children. Much too good for children. So three quarters of a cup of dark cocoa powder. I have a Belgian cocoa powder. You should look for maybe like a Dutch processed uh, <laughs> I get this in like a 50 pound bag for the bakery, so I get some good quality uh, stuff, but three quarters of a cup of cocoa, if you can just- I forgot we were making cake. Yeah, can you just carefully mix that together? Mm -hmm. We also need two different leavening agents here. They're both for texture and also for obviously that rise, but I like to do a mix of baking soda and baking powder and then salt. We need a nice pop of salt to bring out all the flavors. Um, so this is one teaspoon of salt and it's fine table salt that I use. Uh, and then a little secret ingredient to really bring out the chocolate flavor and to keep you up all night, oh um, espresso powder. Really just takes it to that next level of richness. Okay. So this is one teaspoon of instant espresso powder. You wanna find instant espresso powder. And now actually King Arthur Baking Company makes one that's for baking. So you can get this on, I got it on Amazon. Or you can just, like I said, get it in the grocery store, but look for the little container that says instant espresso. You don't wanna use just coffee grinds. That looks fabulous. Duh. I mean, duh. Well, we're like, here's and then, <laughs> and then we're going to incorporate our wet ingredients. We can first start in a small bowl just to kind of incorporate everything. I've got two large eggs that are at room temperature. 
We bake with room temperature eggs most of the time so that all the ingredients are even temperature so that when it bakes, it bakes evenly and you get the best texture possible. So this is two large eggs. Then for acidity, which brings a lot of moisture and richness to the cake, buttermilk. Also the, the acid in there really activates those leavening agents. So we're gonna just whisk those eggs a little bit. Then we're going to add one tablespoon of pure vanilla extract. This is also key when you're making a chocolate thing because it just really brings out the chocolate. And then the buttermilk. So this is a half a cup of buttermilk. You can use the low fat or the whole milk buttermilk. Honestly, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. And then we have oil. So oil or fat is also gonna bring a lot of moisture um, and also give us the right crumb. You know, you don't want it just like crumbling. It's gonna kind of hold it together. Right, right, right. The British baking reference there, maybe a close textured, Ooh, tighter crumb. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, so a half a cup of vegetable oil. You can also use coconut oil here, just as long as it's melted. Um, you can also use butter. You'll get a slightly different texture. So I do like to use oil for this, but honestly, what any kind of fat like that, that, this was canola oil. So a neutral oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, those are the best to use. And then um, I have sour cream, but we're gonna incorporate that in just a minute. Just so, you wait. Just you just wait. Just you wait. And if you know anything about me, like, I feel like my face should be on the Daisy sour cream <laughs> container because sour cream is life. I use so much sour cream for baking for so many purposes. It is the seek my secret weapon. Tell no one. Make sure Tell this no is one. Online. We go to the chunky. So now we're just gonna kind of make a little well in our bowl, and then if you no want well. to, if you want to just pour that in the center while I'm whisking. Slowly. Yes. It's gonna be very thick. We're not, this is not all the moisture that we're getting. <laughs> we also need to have some water. So I have some boiling water on standby and that will help us get the right texture and just bring this all home. Um, so one cup of boiled water we're going to add. So let's pour about half of it in. When that hot water hits the chocolate, it smells like hot chocolate. Yeah, you know, like drinking good. chocolate. Mm, it smells delicious. If you have not already, click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you can be alerted every time I post a new recipe, Dang. which is at least weekly. Um, so please check it out and thanks for joining. And also follow on TikTok and Instagram at Chef Danielle Sepsi because I'm constantly posting new stuff there. So let's have some fun in the kitchen together. So half a cup of sour cream. Now I'm just gonna put that in. Is this the whole fat? Like, is it? Is, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, at this, listen. Don't if skip. you're gonna have the sour cream, Don't just skip. use the full fat. Now we just taste just for good measure. Oh, crunch. You know what? Too good for you. I want a pinch. You can't even taste the sour cream, like. No, it just adds so moisture, weird. richness, and the, again, acidity in buttermilk and sour cream enhances the flavor, adds the moisture, but it's key. But let's get this in the pan, so stand by. All right, while Trunch is finishing up the warm up, <laughs> it's time to get our pans ready. So Ooh. you can do three pans or two. Um, I think a nice thick cake layer on each layer, just so it's nice and moist, because the thinner you get, then the drier you get to. Thick is in. So this is my trick. So you definitely want to spray your pan with nonstick spray or butter it. Um, but then you want to also reinforce it and just make sure that you don't get, you know, so these just are very sticky sometimes, these pans. I use parchment, so mm -hmm. this is how I do it. I double layered my parchment. I put my cake pan this down. Is smart already. I'm gonna trace it with a pen. And then just cut it out. Does not have to be perfect. And now, look, it fits nicely in there. And we just have to spray and put it in, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna use nonstick spray. Keep it easy. Make sure you get in the corners, that's key. We're gonna set the uh, paper at the bottom. Oh, perfect. Perfect, great. And now we're gonna pour our batter in evenly. Just take a rubber spatula around the sides just to ensure nothing is stuck to the bottom or anything. And now just try to pour it as evenly as possible. Of course you could weigh it, but who the heck has time for that? I'm I making know, a mess. I'm supposed I don't know to happening. eat it off the counter, but that's why you invite me. Yep. Go with the dog I never had. That's incredibly even. Now it's time to bake our cakes. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 
for about 30 minutes, but I might test them at 25. Every oven is different, so you don't wanna over bake it. You know the cake is done when you press it and it kind of springs back and you put a toothpick in and it's mostly clean. There's a little bit of crumbs, but it's also very fudgy, but it's not really wet batter. When your cakes have cooled for about 10, 15 minutes, then you can release them from the pan and let them completely cool on a wire rack. So look at how easy this is with the parchment. Comes right off. It looks so good, it's so dark, and that's exactly how we want it. We want it so dark and chocolatey, just like in the movie. Okay, time for the frosting trunch. Uh, I'm famous now, ever since this got released. Oh, okay, uh, trunch is now a diva. ATE, <coughs> she's oh, giving oh, big oh, trunch oh, energy. Excuse me, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> Uh, okay, on to the frosting. I called it icing before, but I guess it's more of a frosting. But it's kind of a ganache buttercream hybrid. So here I have 16 ounces of, this is bittersweet Giardelli chocolate. Um, I like the bittersweet because it's gonna be super dark and more rich and in color and flavor. Now we brought two cups of heavy cream to a simmer. Once it comes to a simmer, shut it right off, and when it's nice and piping hot, you're gonna pour it right over the chocolate. And then we're going to let it sit for about three or four minutes. Everything will melt, and then we're going to use our electric hand beater to just make a nice smooth ganache, and then we're gonna add some other goodies Oof. to it. All right, so it's been about two, three minutes, and our chocolate should be nice and melted. So now I just have my electric hand beaters. I'm gonna go on low speed so we don't wear it. I'm scared, actually. Okay. Yeah, let's not start with that. Look, let's this go is how by you find hand. Out. This is how you find yeah, this bowl is not big enough. Let's start with this. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Look at that. So silky, luscious, dark ganache. Now let's add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so we have nice smooth ganache. Now we're going to take our beaters and be careful. We're going to take one stick of unsalted butter that is kind of room temp temperature and cut into cubes. We're going to add little cubes at a time. And we're gonna whip it in. But once all the butter is in there, now we're going to add some of our dry ingredients. So we're going to gradually add a little bit of powdered sugar. I'm gonna add just maybe like a half a cup to start. I don't wanna wear this. This thing is a little crazy. Ah! Now we're going to alternate. We're going to put some cocoa powder. Again, that really dark, dark cocoa powder. This is a half a cup. So I'm going to start with about half of it. Quarter cup to start. Now I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of salt. We can always add a little bit more later on. We'll just taste as we go. Um, and then about two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Okay, let's add more cocoa and about another half a cup or so of the powdered sugar. We're whisking until it all is combined. We may need to add a little more confectioner sugar to thicken it, it depends. Sometimes the humidity in the air, the weather can affect it and sometimes it'll be looser, sometimes not. So we need to make sure we add as we go. We could always add more, but there's no way to remove it. So it's better <laughs> to be safe than sorry. So we added actually all in about four cups of confectioner sugar. You wanna get the right texture. So right now it's a fudgy consistency, but still fairly loose, but it's on the warmer side. So we need to let this chill for a little bit. We don't wanna chill it so much that you can't spread it. So let's call it about 30 minutes. This should be good to go. And it should be a little bit thicker and then we'll be able to kind of spread it on our cake. So let's set this in the fridge and come back. Are you ready to ice? Ah! The most fun part. Our cake is very cool now. You want it completely cool so the icing doesn't melt off. Can't and also first. it starts to kind of flatten out a bit, um, which makes it easier to stack them too. Um, but I still like to trim one of them slightly. So I'll show you that quickly. I'll take a serrated knife and just kind of trim the rounded part of one of the cakes just so it's nice and flat. So it's flat there. Oh, wow. So fudgy. 
Mm. Oh wow. That's exactly what I wanted. I have a cake holder. This is a plastic holder. So I'm gonna put the lid on and seal it so that we can eat it tomorrow for my family's birthday party. I'm gonna put a little blob of icing. Oh, stop to keep it in place. Yes. Wow. I gotta keep it in place. Girl. Put the looking. flat side down, the, the really flat side down, right in the center. Now we're going to put a nice heaping spoon for the center filling. I don't have a rotating cake stand, which we, I just realized that every time I make a cake, I say, I need to buy a rotating cake stand. So you told me I need to buy one right away. It's so in the after cart. this, it's, in the it's cart. gotta be in the cart. We gotta do it. You wanna push the icing and leave about a half an inch around the border because it will start to spread from the weight of the top cake. So now we're going to just place, and you know what? We can trim this one a little bit too. Why not? I'm gonna try, you know, I don't like to waste it, but we want this to look really spectacular. We're rustic here. Yeah. Push it down a little bit just so we know it's secure. Also, something in my DNA is that I can never make a cake that's not lopsided. So we know going into it, it probably will be lopsided, but this is rustic. Remember, Cookie made it in the school kitchen, sweating in the heat. It's probably gonna be lopsided. But first, let's put a small layer. I'm using an offset spatula. This is called the crumb coat. So this is to lock in all the crumbs on the outside so that we have a nice, clean, frosted cake. Wow, wow, wow. So first, just kind of get a little layer going around the whole thing and just kind of push around just to lock it in. And also, um, there's a little gap here. It'll kind of fill in the gap. Okay, that's a beautiful crumb coat. I mean, nice. you, could, you could serve it like that, but I want to add more icing because we want extra fudgy. So now I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge. Oh. Yeah, just to let it set so it's easier to get that second coat because this will kind of firm up a little bit. Then we get that second coat and I'm gonna leave it room temperature because my mom loves cold cake. She'll have me slice it, put it in the fridge for her. But wow. I like it room temp because it's just gonna be so luscious, gotcha. so fudgy. The outside will remain a creamier texture, which is what I want. Oh. I don't want it to firm up. So let's just set this part in the fridge for maybe like 15 minutes, Get nothing your crazy. Insulin ready. And then and then we'll finish icing this. It's been about 15 minutes and our crumb coat is more set. So now we can add more icing or frosting or ganache, whatever we want to call it. So let's add some more. Oof. Because in the movie you see it's kind of swirled on it just kind of in a rustic manner. So we're just gonna keep adding and I turn it around and I let it kind of cascade down the sides. You're almost there and you can just keep playing around with it and add more and just get crazy with it. But you can put as much or as little icing as you'd like. In honor of the incredible movie, Matilda, and in honor of such great characters and great casting, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. We gotta give it to Brucey. <laughs> we gotta give it to Trunchable. We gotta give it to Miss Honey. Miss Honey. And Cookie, of course. And Cookie. That is one beautiful, fudgy top of cake. Look at that shine. I can see my face in that damn thing. Mm -hmm. Now we can just put the lid on this and let this sit until we want to enjoy it. We decided we're gonna just cut it now because we need to show you guys right now. And I'm just gonna put it back together for the party tomorrow and just ice it again. Oh. Sinks. Sinks. Let's see the layer. Wow. Like, are you kidding me? Wow. Are you kidding me? This is perfection. And look at that glossy, rich icing in the center too. That is perfect. There you have it. The Matilda chocolate cake. It smells incredible. Scrumptious. And what I have to say to that is, you can do it, Brucey. <laughs> you can do it. I'll see you next time on Home at Home. <laughs> to the Chokey. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>